Hello and welcome to another Tales, Tales of, of the Tormented, Tormented Space. space. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is it still very. How tormented is it at this point? Not particularly. It never really was. I, I it's, know. It was sold as like this massive, like, oh no, it's like we've been in the uncharted territories and that was bad, but now we're going to Tormented Space and it's going to be 10 times worse. And then it's kind of like, it's all right here. Yeah, it's like, I mean, the, sure, <laughs> there's this the Scarron stuff going on, but it's, it's yeah. not that the planets are like. Way worse than any planet no, they've been to lots, before. Lots of nice people there, and uh, yeah. they did talk about that. Like drinking water was scarce, and Moya needed that filter. But once they got right. that, I mean, sort of- why? Why is drinking water scarce? Like we're talking about space. Space is big, and a lot of it is like made out of ice crystals. And- yeah. It doesn't seem like a bit well. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, not to delve too far into the into the science fiction part. Hey, hey, hello everyone. Welcome to another reading of a licensed fan fiction. Ooh, oh dear. Oh yes. Oh my. We have another Farscape magazine here. The Thank official you to magazine. Matatron, oh. our our beloved listener who's this contributed. Is number eight, and we have got a gorgeous picture of Shana on the front mm. and a. I guess a picture of Gigi Edgeley back when she was playing. I mean, it's like, it doesn't really look like her now. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, yeah. that does look like a trapezoid. <laughs> it does a bit. <laughs> <laughs> new pictures. Oh, well, yes, we can tell that. Win. New episodes revealed. Win Farscape goodies. Warrior wisdom. Anthony Simcoe interviewed. And new fiction. Alien mayhem on board Moya. I guess that's yes. what we're going to be reading then. Yes, well, we are. Let's see what we have here into season four. The Uncharted Territories. <laughs> as we were talking about. Ooh. Pictures of Aaron Sun's action figure. Oh, uh, those action figures. Yep. Chiana Girl. Chiana Girl, yes. From rough and re- uh, ready Nebari prisoner to loyal Moya crew member. It's been an interesting journey for Farscape's Chiana. Paul Simpson and Ruth Thomas catch up with actress Gigi Edgeley to discuss the past, present, and future of her character. Paul Simpson sounds like a familiar name. It does it. Paul Simpson, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I think someone with a, possibly the same person or someone with a very similar name. Apologies, Paul, if you're listening, and we're we're not entirely sure. Is still uh, uh, involved in promoting Gigi and her yeah. uh, an active member of her stream. Well, there's like lots of uh, uh, shots of uh, Gigi Edgeley in a interesting in a t-shirt and tank top, I suppose. Oh yeah. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Here, here, here you can recognize her Battlestar face. Battlestar Galactica vibe. It the, does. Yes, it right, does. In their in their off-duty uniforms. Wow, yes, she looks very young here. Actually, she also looks younger than she, than Jana does, I'd say. But Right. <laughs> I mean, she was 18 when she started. She would have been 20, 21. Yeah, damn. Yeah. yeah. What a talent. Yes, fantastic. The Nibari. Oh, and the Scarons, too. Ooh, nasty people. I'm just like... Sorry, I'm just <laughs> leafing through this and I'm trying to describe. It's oh, here genuinely we go. delightful. I think this is actually the first time I've seen a fake picture of Anthony Simcoe without the makeup on. <gasps> He's such a lovely big dude, isn't he? <laughs> it is. It's well, this, this big old sort of surfer teddy bear yes. of a man. Wow, I, I would not have recognized him walking around. I could have walked straight past him and I would have not realized that was Anthony Simcoe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hey, if uh, if Dave Elsie had had his way, all you would have seen of Dave Dave Simcoe, uh, <laughs> all you would have seen of Anthony Simcoe, say that ten times fast, yeah. would be like his sclera and eyelids, and yeah. even probably not the sclera. Oh dear, which is well the because of he, the because eyes. he would have had been wearing contacts and yes, again, that yes. unfortunately. Oh no, Dave. Oh, the doctor says I can't. Dave. No, oh, oh, it's such a shame for at least ten weeks. For at least like, the rest, and then it ooh. wouldn't make sense. To oh wow! On. Now look at this centerfold. Oh <laughs> my, my <laughs> saucy! <laughs> for the readers at home, we've got a big centerfold of pilot looking slightly. <laughs> Nonplussed. Nonplussed, yes. That's a good yes. way to do it. He's very unimpressed. Yeah, that one's going on the wall. <laughs> oh, pilot. We love you so. Oh, yes. Oh, let's see. We have the, oh, this guy, the scientist, the wormhole scientist guy from the uh, laboratory. The oh, base, yes. What was his name again? Oh, I have um, no idea. It's like, I'm not even trying that one. <laughs> Oh, I know it, though. Ooh, and Strapper! Ve- and a very festive-looking uh, Rigel there. He's so jolly. He is. He looks like a he's lovely like... Lovely portrait. That's the start yes. of our story, by the way. Oh, oh yes, so it is. Yes, oh, I'll quickly skip to the end of the magazine then to uh, have a quick look what we what see here. What a treasure here. these are. A little bit more Delvian makeup by the looks of it. The war, the the, the whack at hole. Yeah, it's a recurring segment where I think... Oh, yes. I think that's Dave... 
uh, David Kemper talks there or somebody else? It's, I think it looked more like a mail. Uh, like, yeah, people uh, are uh, responding to mail. I'm not ah, sure who is it. responding to mail. But uh, it is... Oh, yeah, it is, no, it, it just says who is sending the email or regular mail. I think email was like, oh, they send it via, via email. The oh. Electronic mail. Yes. No, I bought it on the electronic bay. <laughs> And uh, right, yes. Download it from the Electronic Six Twenty One. Oh, there's, oh, there's a lovely picture here of Cartoon Scorpius. Oh, where did it go? Oh, from yes. For flip's sake, why can't I remember the episode name? Uh, Revenging Angel. Ah, oh. there we go. Well done, like, Kaki. Like, oh yes, cor- with corks in his ears and. Uh, God, there must be production stills from that. I suppose so. But, you know, yeah. animated cells. Yeah. I mean, oh, please let that be true. Oh, well, it depends on if they no, actually they probably did, it. did done digitally. Probably already digital at that point, yeah. Still, though. Okay, so today's story, it has like this jolly looking, brigacious looking, I would say, uh, uh, a Rigel, Rigel. Who's holding a little shiny cup uh, with his pinky up, by the yes. way. Well oh. done, Fiona. And this story takes place after different destinations. It's written by John Kenneth Muir. Yep. And it's called Make a Wish. <clears throat> Officer Sun No, no, sorry Officer Sun Aaron awoke with a start The sounds and smells of that ancient monastery And the bloody siege Still around her But she was aboard Moya now Far from the Venex Oh, those hotline people mm. And the battle that killed the legendary sub-officer Dacon Oh yes, he was the, the you know, Kind of ineffectual person Like more in legend, a stronger person in legend than he was in person. Yes, I mean he was the he was the cook, and he had just had a a, a very, like praise averse senior officer. Yes, <laughs> officer son, pilot repeated urgently, awaiting response. Four ships are converging on Moya's position. Aaron bolted up from bed. Peacekeepers? No, pilot answered. Unfamiliar. Get up here, Aaron. Crichton broke into the frequency. We may be in trouble. On my way, Aaron answered, sprinting from her quarters. When she turned the final loop to the gold hued command tier, she spied Crichton, Dargold, Jewel, Shiana, and Stark, all poised for action. It looks bad, Crichton noted, the viewer depicting mismatched ships speeding towards Moya. They aren't military configuration, Aaron observed. More like a jumble of commercial and transport modules, and each one is bearing an individual insignia. Huh. That's a... A very astute observation. Very good. Yes, especially that she can read that off a of view screen from ships which are like... Uh, anyway. Hey, he- they've, they've been shown, like, everybody has better eyesight than, than humans. True, true. You mean they don't come from the same planet? Gianna asked. Apparently not. Can we starburst? <laughs> Jewel demanded. <laughs> Moya does not wish to depart this system until she's established that Talon isn't here, Pilot replied. But she is concerned. Concerned? <laughs> Jewel was flabbergasted. <laughs> if we don't stop us! Okay, this is stop a bit much. chattering, you nevik! A booming voice interrupted. <laughs> if you want a Skizik's chance of surviving, leave the negotiations to me. All heads swiveled as Rigel hovered through the open hatch. What negotiations? Dargo barked. What the frell are you talking about? They aren't planning to attack. They're here at my invitation. Invitation? Aaron and John questioned. Yes. Explain. Now. Aaron snapped. On that last commerce planet, I made the acquaintance of z a representative of the Confederacy. The Confederation, that's the one. An alliance of four races controlling this region. Never heard of it, Chana admitted. Nor had I, Rydell acknowledged. Well, he also hadn't heard of the Confederacy of Tr- or the, the con- whatever of Trow, Consortium of Trow. Fair. Which had ten billion planets or something. Mm, I mean, it's a big universe. The races recently came together out of economic necessity, seeking to make a reputation in the Uncharted Territories. Hey, this is a tale from the Uncharted Territories it is. again. I mean, I suppose so, yes. So you invited them about more, yeah? Precisely. Why? They know this region, Rigel explained. If Talon has been here... You did this out of the goodness of your heart, Dargo mm. was sceptical. To reunite mother and son. Interpret my motives as you choose. Rigel retorted, but before she died, Zahn instructed me to care for Moya, and that's precisely what I'm doing. A silence fell across the tear, and Stark face contorted as though he'd been sucker-punched. Zahn, he whispered softly. These primitive yachtses are seeking recognition from major power, Rigel pressed, aware he'd struck a chord. So I informed Z-Web of my station in the Hynerian Empire. 
former station, Gianna corrected. <laughs> Suddenly Crichton knew where this was heading. Oh, no. Oh, yes, Rigel replied, lips stretching into a smile. Oh, there goes the cover image. <laughs> they come bearing gifts. I told Z-Web my anniversary of ascendancy was approaching, and it would be prudent to honor me. Your anniversary of ass what? Ascendancy. <laughs> Rigel's words met with silence, and he sighed. The anniversary of the Arn, I assumed power. So, you play pin the tail on the donkey and we do what? Crichton asked. Dole out ice cream? You see to the needs of the delegation, and I'll make certain inquiries regarding talent. I hate this plan already, Dargo complained. Aaron paused. Whether, whether Rigel was right to act on his own accord, the important consideration was talent. Pilot? There was silence. Then Pilot's sensitive voice answered, Moya believes Rigel's plan has merit. Rigel grinned smugly. Moya will permit docking. The Leviathan's hangar had never been so crowded, and Aaron felt unsettled by the newly docked ships, and one could be a wolf as anyone could be a wolf in sheep's clothing. Mm -hmm. The remainder of the crew gathered in an unofficial welcoming line, except for Rigel, who hovered overhead like an important dignitary. Do we know anything about their culture? <laughs> Jewel no, worries. louder, louder. You can face <laughs> do we do any, anything about their the culture? No, Jewel was, worries. You didn't let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> I had little time to squeeze Z-Web for details, Rigel whispered. But the Erosids are apparently the real power in the Confederation. The Somata are junior members, and the Axa and Xax joined up after an expensive war. The Axa and Xax, I'll bet they're like sister species with yeah, names right? like that. Before Jewel could ask another question, the disembarkation commenced and four aliens approached. In the lead was the Erisid, a gangly creature with a face like a porcelain doll. Ew. The spidery veins dotting his countenance resembled a hairline fractures. Whoa. Behind the Erisid were two elfin creatures, virtual opposites. The Zax had a green face and was garbed in red, and the Axa had a red face and wore green. But the last alien was the most striking. Approximately Dargo's height, the Samata boasted a widened nose with six nostrils. Her bloodshot eyes were bracketed by puffy, fluid-filled cheeks. We honor, we honor the Domina, Ooh. the Erosid announced, bowing his head. The creatures behind them followed suit, and the Axa delegate accidentally bumped heads with the Xax. You idiot, the Zax complained. You're an idiot, the Axa retorted. Enough, the Erosid silenced them. I am High Chairman Serubim. You address Rigel the Sixteenth, Dominar of the Hynerian Empire, Rigel replied imperiously. We've prepared a banquet and collected our finest treasure. Oh, no, sorry, that's the other guy's so yours. Yes, okay. We've prepared a banquet and collected our finest treasures. Oh, I'm doing the, the Thermion from you do Galaxy it. Yes, Quest. Yes, there's a bit. <laughs> oh, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go whole hawk. We've prepared a banquet and collected <laughs> our finest treasures to honor you. We ask in return only the formal recognition of our confederation. <laughs> <laughs> How are we doing? <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> <clears throat> of course, Rigel nodded. We'll get to that after the treasures. The Erisid bowed again, and Crichton and Aaron met eyes. How would the aliens react if they knew Rigel was a renegade, representing nothing but himself? The sooner the charade ended, the better. The spread was exquisite. With the assistance of the Axa and Zax, Cerobeam had tractored a food unit caravan into Moya's dining tier. Each container overflowed with colourful and spicy delicacies, many new to Moya's crew. And then, bringing up the rear, the Samata, looking mysteriously puffy, introduced a storage module that undoubtedly bore the treasure Cerobeam described. Dargo and Crichton remained at the party's edge, observing as Chiana, Stark and Jewel tended to the bloated Rigel. Aaron attempted to play Handmaiden too, but ceased when the Hanairan belched in her ear. Disgusted, she backed away and glowered. Delighting in Aaron's irritation, Rigel crammed a patch of bristly green marsh fibres into his mouth, then washed them down with a vicious yellow fluid. Oh, viscous. Well, I mean, it might be vicious as well, but... Try some, Rigel ordered Jewel. No, thanks! <laughs> the redhead def the red deferred. I've drunk enough piss lately! <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> Don't be. Oh, of course, I was like the. Yes. yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Don't be insulting, Rigel smiled wickedly. Drink. All eyes observed Jewel as she imbibed the fluid, which bore the tart scent of ammonia. She gagged 
Now, how am I going to... But forced a smile. <laughs> Delicious. And now you, Aaron, Rigel gestured. I think not you, little... Your Highness? At the far wall, Dargo inadvertently made eye contact with Cerebim for what seemed like the hundredth time in Microts and looked away, irritated. Is he looking at me? Dargo demanded. Who? The error said. Is he looking at me? I don't see anyone else standing there, so he must be. Oh, Crichton dead a perfect De Niro. I'll rip oh. out his heart and serve it to him with his damned urine juice. Mellow out, Crichton suggested. Until the high chair guy gets what he wants and leaves. <laughs> <laughs> the Samata, a female named Sinius, eyed Crichton and Dargo suspiciously, and Crichton's pulse quickened. Had she overheard his remark? After an awkward pause, Crichton was relieved when the alien shifted to open the treasure chest. Swallowing tender silk roasts, Rigel gasped as a sparkling sea of jewels and rarities poured out of a storage unit onto Moya's deck. Gianna lunged to grab the wealth herself, but Rigel cleared his throat. Chiana, dear, he said, it isn't necessary to check the items. On this occasion, I shall do so. The Nabari huffed and stepped aside as Rigel glided forward. The Hynerian leapt from his throne sled and began rummaging through the goods. A Picardian cartograph, Rigel Ooh. enthused. Triptilian harmonizers and what's this? The Hynerian discovered a small, trunk nosed creature amidst the miscellaneous items. Why, it's a Mixan scent eater. What the hell is that? Crichton asked, regarding the beady-eyed rodent. A scavenger that eats everything it considers foul-smelling, Rigel reported. An appropriate gift for a Hynerian, <laughs> Crichton noted. Ha ha ha. Finally, Chana could not be rest- no, sorry, could be restrained no more. Elbowing Rigel out of the way, she flashed an obsequious smile. Well done. Please, your please, your Majesty, permit me to catalogue your gifts. Outmaneuvered, Rigel seethed as Chiana fingered a small, featureless cube. What's this? A, a hist cube. A, a hist cube, Serebim revealed. Our confederation's history <laughs> for his majesty's viewing pleasure. Oh, how thoughtful. Quite, Rigel added. May I? It's beneath you, Dominar. Aaron grabbed the cube and held it just beyond Rigel's grasp. I'll view the history and brief you. Rigel snarled and faked a smile. The gifts are to your liking, Serebim wondered. Indeed, High Chairman. Rigel slid back onto his throne sled. Wait, is Serebim the one that the, the, I we were doing earlier? Okay, fine. The, look, they're all Thermians. How <laughs> yeah. about that? Oh, yes, the, there's a bunch of different Thermians. Oh, good point. Indeed, High Chairman. Rigel slid back onto his throne sled. Oh, then dismiss your underlings, <laughs> and we may continue our summit. <laughs> Aaron and Darko bristled at the Erisid's descriptor, but held their tongues. You heard the high chairman, Rigel and Rod. You may leave, underlings. Six arms later, Jewel was still upset Rigel had called her an underling. I've beat I've been a slave, Stark reminded her. Rigel's remarks were not meant I know <laughs> Jewel snapped, stalking the corridor outside command. I don't see why Shh. Stark silenced her. Someone's coming. At that, that's your Stark? I don't know. It's full valley girl. No, I love it. <laughs> At that moment, the Axa and Zax stormed by. You're a terrorist, the Axa accused the Zax. You're the terrorist, Zax answered. You threatened our security. Yeah, you threatened our security, the Axa replied. Gentle creatures, please, Stark interrupted. Maybe assist you. This accent of yours, I can't follow it. Where? I, I don't know. I'm just where like, is he from? I, I have no idea. I can't. I love it. Yeah. Maybe assist you. No, the delegate said in unison. Then, uh, okay, he is a difficult one to pin I know, down because right? I don't want to go like ah, just Aussie. make some. Oh right, yes, good um, point. That would be too close to the truth. Now look, he's he's like the Phantom of the Opera. In fact, I think he went to do the Phantom I've of never, the Opera. I've never seen that. No, but you can imagine, sort of like tuxedo mask. He'd be very oh, uh, fair. Uh, then, Axa and Zax... No, that doesn't feel right. I'm, oh, okay. Let's see where... I'm just going to open my mouth and... Nope. <sighs> Say something. Give me a prompt. Ooh. Um, um, just look around the room. Oh, something uh, that inspires uh, how, uh, how, uh, how about, you. Uh, how about... Stark, uh, How about Stark. Italian? Like... <laughs> Okay. No bad ideas for the <laughs> Then Axa and Zax Stark gestured to each represent Oh he is Italian <laughs> Please return to the talks I'm Axa, one alien corrected Stark 
And I'm Zax! The other and one insisted with wounded pride. Jewel sighed. The situation was becoming intolerable. As are our accents. Yes. Frustrated, Dargo pounded the door to Crichton's quarters and John greeted him. What's wrong? The Luxon gestured down the hallway. Cerebim stood there staring. When noticed, he retreated around a corner. <laughs> well, that was subtle, Crichton whispered. Why isn't he talking to Rigel? Sinius is conducting the negotiation, Darko reported, and that damned Erosid is following me everywhere. <laughs> Maybe he likes you. Maybe you like it when I sever his spine. Be nice. I'm sure Rigel's working his mojo on the Sonata. Sonata. Whatever. This whole shindig won't last a cycle. All right, better not, Dargo said with clenched jaws, or that Erosid shall know pain. <laughs> Don't lose it. I'll talk to Rigel and move things along. I oh, might be into it. Crichton approached the dining tier hatchway as Rigel and Sinius discussed matters over flibbin liver stew. Flibbin liver stew. The Sumata was pink, her nose clogged. Knock, knock. What are you doing here? Rigel demanded. I uh, wanted to see if you'd cut the cake, Crichton smiled. The what? The birthday cake, the human explained. What are you talking about? Oh, come on, you dominatrix. It's your anniversary of ascendancy, Crichton chided. There's got to be cake. Oh? If there's cake, there would be candles, Crichton continued. And if there were candles, you would make a wish. And if you made a wish, it might just be for Mr. Sinus here to tell us about Talon. <laughs> Talon? Sinius grew curious. A missing... Yacht, Rigel recovered expertly. A very special yacht, Crichton added. Given to me by the peacekeepers. They must hold you in to great esteem to grant such a gift, Sanias <laughs> considered, sneezing into her bow. Oh, they do, Rigel assured her. Have you seen it? Crichton cuts to the heart of the matter. Mm, seen what? Rigel's ship. Sinius seemed confused as she wiped brown-orange snot from her nostrils. Wow, charming. You lost your yacht? Yes, Rigel lied, to an underling who stole it. Oh, wow. Good help is so hard to find, Crichton cracked. Perhaps you've heard of it, Rigel continued. Part Leviathan, part peacekeeper gunship. Nothing like it. I've had no news, Sirius reported. But I still have my people. But I shall have my people scan for it. Wonderful, Rigel glared at Crichton. Yes, wonderful, Crichton agreed. Now we can conclude this summit and celebrate your ascendancy in the system next door. <laughs> Rigel's expression soured. He wasn't ready for his party to end. The hist cube faded to black and Aaron shivered. She'd seen it all before. The so-called history of the Confederation was nothing more than propaganda, like the kind orchestrated so expertly by Peacekeeper High Command. <sighs> Lies, all lies, like the legend of Dacon, a child sent to his death but glorified as some great soldier, a hero. Determined, Aaron left her quarters and rendezvoused with Dargo and Crichton near command. We have a problem, she said brusquely. The Erisids are brutal conquerors. What? I viewed the hist cube, she explained. They claim the core principle of their culture is love, but they force other races to conform to their perceptions of it in everything from personal relationships to planetary diplomacy. Love is just... A smokescreen, Crichton understood. Yes. Sounds like the peacekeepers. Precisely. The Erisids force the Axa and Zax into the configuration, even though they hate each other, Karen, Aaron continued. And they enslaved or rehabilitated the Somata, who are terribly dangerous. Dangerous? Yes, they are highly allergic to other beings. Crichton considered that. Sinius looked kind of puffy the last time I saw her. Listen to me, John, Aaron became grave. To cure themselves, the Somata devour life forms they consider allergens. You mean... Us, Aaron confirmed. They eat representatives of other cultures and build up immunity. Wow. They prefer to eat leaders. Oh, you think Sinius is going to eat Sparky? Unless we stop her. Without warning, Pilot's concerned voice interrupted the conversation. Commander, Officer Sun, Moya has detected a dampening field near your position, an energy opera suppressor of unknown origin. Just then, Cerebeam stepped into view, cradling a black orb. He flipped toggle on it, and every light and power cell on Moya went completely dark. Aaron and John drew their blasters, but their eyes hadn't yet adjusted to the blackness. Blasters? Come on, John Kenneth Muir. They're called pulse pistols. Oh, yes. Okay, Serebim, what's your game? John demanded. A voice answered from somewhere ahead. We must impose love whenever we discover its absence. <laughs> what the frell does that mean? The Lux emancipation should be together, wow. Serebim opined. 
A pirate? Yes, I guess. Yes. I've been observing you. Dargo and me, Aaron wondered, surprised. No, Seraphim replied. Dargo and Crichton. Yes! <laughs> yes! A thousand fanfics come true! <laughs> I had no idea! This is amazing! Oh, well, John Kenneth Muir, way to turn it around! It's canonical now. <laughs> it's canon! <laughs> Yes, absolutely. No, this is licensed fan fiction in the official Farscape magazine. You've heard it all here. The Lux and the Sebation, Crichton and Dargo should be together. Oh, this is rich, Crichton remarked. Correctly, in my view. Your ship is paralyzed. <laughs> Cerebim ignored him. Dargo and Crichton must acknowledge their true feelings of kinship, or it shall remain forever. So. Oh, I hope I get more lines by Cerebim. You're having so much fun. <laughs> But I thought you wanted your confederation to be legitimate, Crichton reminded the Erisid. How's this going to play with the Hynerians? We must impose our will to gain legitimacy, Cerebim explained. With love, we bent the axe and axe to our will and civilized the Somata. Now the same love will challenge things here and on Hyneria in small steps. Then the Nabari all over again. Yes. <laughs> We could shoot you, Aaron noted, attempting to detect Cerebim's shroud of position. And damage the power suppressor? Not likely, Cerebim laughed. If Dargo and Crichton acquiesce to my demand and admit that I'm right, I might restore power. Might? There are other ways in which the Confederation's love may improve things on Moya. So, so envious you get <laughs> like you're amazing I, I, I at just... this. <laughs> well... John, Dargo, you heard him, Aaron suggested calmly, <laughs> gesturing down the dark corridor as she took a tender step forward. Crichton understood immediately. She needed a distraction. <sighs> oh, it takes a big man to admit he's found someone special, Crichton said finally, placing a hand on the Luxon's shoulder. I love you, pal. If I wasn't nauseated, I'd kill you. Oh, fuck off, Dargo. <laughs> Dargo! Fine, the Luxon played along. I love you too, John. Now what we need is some chains and KY <laughs> and uh, for a little Luxon bonding ritual. <laughs> Just then, Aaron leapt into action, twirling low in a half circle and unbalancing the hidden Erisid. She detected him by his breathing, yeah, probably, and took him down. As Cerebim fell, the orb dropped from his hand and Aaron caught it. Cerebim love lunged for Aaron's throat, but a jab from her elbow sent him back to the deck. Why? John demanded, approaching the subdued alien. What could you gain by forcing Dargo and me to do that? It's conditioning, Aaron realized, recalling her youth about to, aboard a peacekeeper carrier and the onslaught of propaganda that had taught her to despise outsiders, to question nothing, to believe the lies. Oh, goody. The first step toward conquering a people is to control their hearts, Serebim admitted in rote fashion, as though reciting scripture. Yes, Aaron sneered, thinking of the society that had brainwashed and then killed child a child like deacon Dakin. make your prey accept a small lie first then another one soon they are so comfortable with the little lies they won't notice the big ones it's a way to control your enemy make them weak hearts and minds cried and comprehended an american president tried to win a war that way once it didn't work out a fact you might want to report to your confederation rigel dargo suddenly remembered ending ending the conversation oh yeah the uh, confrontation Moya's power restored, Aaron and Crichton burst into the dining tier to see a wheezing Sinius. Her mouth had elongated into a razor-like beak, and she was clutching a squirming Rigel. Put him down, Aaron targeted the Samata. I couldn't suppress the hunger, Sinius admitted as she released the Hynerian. He was making me sick. You, you embarrassment. <laughs> Sir Rubim spat, guarded along, guarded along the axe and zax by an irritated dog. Ah, yes. Your ways are not permitted under confederation law. I am what I am. Sinia <laughs> sniffed. We shall leave in shame. Wait, Rigel urged. For the record, I don't recognize your felling confederation. And Crichton, candles or no candles, there's my bloody wish. Get them off this ship. Serebim looked downcast as he and Sinius were led away. The Axa and Zax followed closely. This is your fault. No, it's yours. Aaron sighed as the aliens departed. Different cultures, same mistakes, forcing others to bend there to their will, doing it by lies and manipulation. Dren. 
Yeah, Crichton acknowledged. I'd say everyone in the Confederation has a Zax to grind. <laughs> oh, Crichton. Aaron face, Rigel. And you, little Mivonk, put it through us all through that, and we still know nothing of Talon's whereabouts. <laughs> I love calling someone a Mivonk. A little Mivonk, even. Can you call someone, hey, you ball? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's a wonderful insult. Rigel pouted. Sorry. Well, at le- well, at least we celebrated your birthday, Crichton attempted to cheer him up. My what? Your anniversary of ascendancy. Oh, Rigel replied. I made that up. It was about time I got a bit of attention around here. At that, the Hynerian spun away, leaving a surprised Erin and Crichton in his wake. <laughs> John K. Muir is the author of ten reference books for McFarland, including Terror Television, the films of John Carpenter, and Wes Craven, The Age of Horror, a frequent collaborator to magazines such as Film Facts, Cinescape, and Collector's News. John is also a columnist at Deep Outside Science Fiction, Fantasy, and Horror. This is his second Farscape short story for the Farscape magazine. I think we've read the other one. Oh, probably. And we've got this lovely picture here of Rigel holding a can of two he's new which I assume must be some sort of Australian beer which is like <laughs> you're sitting there looking with a slightly dopey expression or more like a slightly drunk expression oh and good on I you. guess this must have been that must filmed be from like terra firma must, exactly something. something along that time it must have been he's shot skivvies too like that those look like long john underwear oh see how plain hot, it is hard to tell up. yes it is but uh, yes, thank you for joining us for another, well, tale of the Uncharted Territories, actually, not a tale yes, of exactly. Tormented Space, because it was like back back in... Uh, Season three, those halcyon days, yes. well, Zan had uh, just gone over the oh, rainbow yes, bridge. Oh, yes, unfortunately, alas. yes. Uh, uh, but we'll be back next week as we continue, let me see, We're So Screwed, the trilogy ends. We are rushing towards the end of season four. I know, episode 20 already. 420! Oh. Gosh, I wonder. Oh, yes. The uh, number. <laughs> uh, we'll see you then. I'm Kaki. I'm Kay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So,